welcome back to Temple Grandin School's Power of 10 video series. Today we'll be focusing on tips from the trenches. And we hope this episode provides you some encouragement for your own school and parenting journeys. I'm Jen Wilger, Executive Director of Temple Grandin School. I'm also a parent to two terrific teens and one young adult, Micah, who you heard from in our last video, 10 Surprising Careers for Aspies. I founded Temple Grandin School to help Micah and other neurodiverse teens build communities of support to help guide them through the critical work of identity formation that takes place in adolescence. Having a supportive community is transformative for students and can make the difference in whether they develop the self-confidence to take on the challenges of young adulthood. As it turns out, finding a community of support is also transformative for parents. So important, in fact, that if you take only one tip from this video, make it this one. Create a community around your child. This is your journey too, and along the way, you'll meet amazing and inspiring people who will understand and help you. Your community might start with family and close friends, but it will grow to include professionals, teachers, faith leaders, coworkers, and most importantly, other parents who share your experience and delight in your child's gifts. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to some folks from my community. One, a fellow parent, and one, a young adult. We'll talk about our communities and share tips and strategies that have helped us each navigate the social and academic challenges of the teen years. At the end of the video, you'll see our list of tips, but we hope our conversation will also inspire you to seek and share the wisdom that is already present in your own communities. In the spirit of the times we're living in, and to accommodate our different locations and schedules, we'll be talking today via video conference. I have Moya and Justin with us. Moya, Justin, will you please introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Moya Smith, and I am the mom to four children, including the amazingly neurodiverse Evan, who attended Temple Grandin School for three years and graduated in 2016. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker in private practice. Um, hi, I'm Justin Owens. I'm a uh, TGS alumni. I went there for five years and graduated in 2017. Now I'm going to UC Denver um, and I'm studying film here. Wonderful. Now that we're all connected, let's continue with our second tip. Take care of yourself, your child, and your family. So Moya, in addition to being an alumni parent and mom to Evan, you're also a licensed clinical social worker, as you've told us. Do you have any tips to share with parents? I do. So self-care is really, really important. And sometimes we think that means a manicure or a massage, but it doesn't have to. It can be whatever feeds your soul. If you have a hobby, if you love to read, if you need to go for a walk. If you want date night, you don't have to go out to dinner. Have, have a pizza night in your bedroom and don't talk about kids with your partner. Um, exercise is always great and it doesn't have to be hard. It can just be a walk, but it's just important to settle and spend some time with yourself so that you're able to care for the other people in your lives well. Thanks, Moya. That's, that's really great. So important for us as parents and, and students, too, to take care of ourselves. Um, this next tip kind of follows on that. Um, it's a tip that we've heard from so many different parents and students over the years, and that tip is start your day your way. Having control of a consistent daily routine is a great way to manage anxiety and to make sure you set yourself up for success. Justin? How do you start your days? Are there routines that help you consistently? On Tuesday, Thursdays, I just do the morning class, take a, a nice hour break, and then do another class. Um, otherwise, on Monday, Wednesday, and, and the weekends, um, I uh, like to um, kind of watch some things. Uh, before I get into work to just kind of ease myself into it. Um, so when I can, I, I kind of start with the, the break 
Um, Fridays, I'm also waking up at 9.30 this semester, though. So um, I take my break at lunch. Um, and something I'd say is important for self-care um, is understanding what you need and accommodating it for yourself as best you can. Um, and also another key thing is uh, managing your time in a way where you know when you need to be productive and you can plan around that and then interspace those um, periods of productivity with um, breaks because we're all human and we all need that. We all do need breaks, that, that's for sure. And it sounds like you you do have kind of a regular routine of getting up around the same time and interspersing breaks within your schedule. Um, when you mentioned watching something, I don't know that you mentioned, but you're studying film. So I can see how that would be a preferred enjoyable activity as well as maybe a way to prepare for getting started on some of your more uh, productive work related to what you're studying. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. We've also heard from students who take time for a special interest or preferred activity at the start of each day. And from parents who make a concerted effort to clear the deck by assisting their students with morning routines before school. And speaking of school, we heartily endorse our next tip. Find an educational setting that works for your child and your family. Temple Grandin School, of course, is a great setting for many neurodiverse students. It, it was great for Justin and for Evan and for Micah. Uh, but we've known students over the years that have found success in a variety of educational settings. Public school, private school, charter school, virtual school these days, homeschool. Um, there really is a school for every student, and it's important to find a good match. Um, I wondered, Moya and Justin, if you might comment a little bit on what do you think are some characteristics that would make a safe and comfortable learning environment for neurodiverse students? Well, uh, at TGS, there was a motto that was um, everybody's working on something. Mm -hmm. And I think that was really key to um, having the students kind of understand each other's flaws um, and be more forgiving of the um, unexpected things that might happen when someone gets anxious or overwhelmed or stuff like that. Um, and I, I think that's a really important environment, one of like understanding um, because it also, um, can help that a uh, student kind of improve themselves because they know that they're in a supportive environment that um, isn't thinking so negatively of them. Yeah, we do have that motto here. Another motto we have is growth from strengths. So kind of the flip side of that, we're honest and open about our strengths and our challenges and understand that those things are common to all of us as humans. For our family, one of the biggest things was finding a place where Evan and what he could do and who he was, was really understood. Like the teachers got it and, and neurodiversity was valued not questioned there it was not we're going to change you have to change it was like if you know we can grow together but we accept you for who you are and that for us was i mean even without the education that was the biggest piece for my child and his identity and accepting who he was other things that have been pointed out to us are class size so small classes are often helpful for for this population of students um, teachers, I don't know if you alluded to directly, but the understanding piece and teachers who want to work with neurodiverse students. Flexibility is super key. So being able to adapt to student needs and challenges and change schedules if necessary. And then I think also really to find a school that will provide either 
explicit or integrated opportunities to work on those social communication and executive function skills. Once you find a school that works, keep focused on your end goal. Join with the school as partners in your students' growth and development. And don't be afraid to make a change if things aren't working. Instead, celebrate what you've accomplished in the time you've been working together. Part as pals, as we like to say here at Temple Grandin School, and seek out a new school partnership for the next phase of your journey. And as you move through different schools and support systems, this tip will help you out. Keep your child's paperwork current. As a parent, this is one that I discovered early on. In the midst of our family's discovery and diagnostic process years ago, I was overly stuck on a particular label. In our case, Asperger's. I wanted it to say Asperger's, not autism, not something else. But I quickly learned that labels can also be helpful. I've learned that different agencies call things by different names and that there's reasons for that and it's okay. So my advice here, review your evaluation reports, the actual reports with your student because those reports often contain specific descriptions of strengths and challenges, strategies, recommendations, that will be more helpful than a simple diagnostic label. Also, understand what neurodiversity means to your child and to your family. And then use the label that gets you the services. Justin, you've recently transitioned from, actually it's been a while now, you've been working through college, um, high school to college. What was your experience with sharing your diagnosis, your strengths, your challenges, any labels with the, the college disability support services people? Well, um, it really only looked like one meeting um, with the, the office um, at the college that's devoted to uh, disability support services. Um, and then beyond that, like once they know what you need. Um, they can relay that to the teachers. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward process. And also an important thing to know is exactly what it is that you need because there's a, a very wide variety of um, accommodations and uh, since ASD is such a wide spectrum, different people are going to need different things. Um, for example, some people do need and value uh, extra time um, on tests. The major time I used it was for um, a paper for an astronomy class because um, I hadn't uh, planned enough time while taking the class to make the final paper. So I just got um, an extended period over the summer to work on it. Um, and that was very helpful and made it so I didn't have to retake a class. So one of the things that was really helpful um, with our experience for Evan was that he got to go to and was supported through community college, a course while he was still in 12th grade at TGS. So it was like, I'm doing a college course, but I have the backup and support of the staff. Um, and then um, I love what Justin said about being able to advocate for yourself, know what you need and get that support. And um, we also use the services of um, Department of Vocational Rehab, which helps people with special needs get jobs. Um, it helped Evan with resume writing and interviewing. And then we kind of split ways because it wasn't a good fit after that, but that helped him to find a full-time job and gave him the confidence that he needed. So see what resources are out there and use them for sure. So at TGS, we meet kids who, who love their labels, but we also meet kids who don't really want to share those. So some kids aren't so sure about this whole autism thing. They're willing to accept that everyone has strengths and challenges, as we've discussed, but they might rather not share the fact that they are on the spectrum or neurodiverse. Um, we meet other kids who lead with their neurodiversity as they form their identities. Autism is a significant part of who they are, 
and they, they want to share that part. Um, if autism is a spectrum, which it is, uh, so is identity. And it includes so much more than just these labels. And it's up to the students who are in these teen years to start building the identity they want for themselves to live out in the world. These next two tips address the intersection of identity and neurodiversity. Moya, would you talk about the next tip, number six? Educate your child about neurodiversity. I think it's really important to provide our kids and our families um, with exposure to positive viewpoints about all the unique gifts that are inherent in ASD, that, that kids know the value that comes with that, the specific um, talents and gifts that are part of that diagnosis. It's also super important to expose them to people out there in the real world, people like Temple Grandin or Dave Finch, people who um, are on the spectrum and speak publicly or write publicly about it and, and look at what those people are doing and how they're living their lives. And then finally, I think it's really important because there are some prejudices and some stereotypes out there about autism spectrum disorders and Asperger's. And um, I think our kids need to know what some of the stereotypes are, some of the things that are said in the media that may be incorrect, so that they're empowered to address those so they know this is not this is not what I am or who I am, so they can understand this is how people might see me and this is what the actual truth is. It's really important, and this is our next tip actually, to let students be who they are. And we've had students say that in the past about our community here, that this is really a place where you can be who you are. And students, they're in control of their identity, including their diagnoses, their labels, and who they share those with. Another part of being yourself and forming your identity is choosing your own friends and your own activities. Justin, am I right? Uh, that, yeah, that's true. Uh. <laughs> um, I, I know your family, and, and so really what I'm getting at here is for, for you to be able to choose those as a teenager or now a young adult, not having your family or your parents choose those for you. Um, as moms, parents of neurodiverse kids, we can get pretty involved in setting up experiences and activities because we want our, our kids to have success. And so um, we'll plan these activities and maybe even choose the, the people who are participating to structure a positive experience. Um, if we do our jobs well with that, it works and you make a friend and you might even keep that friend. Um, but as you get older and gain more independence and living on your own and going off to college and work, um, you're going to have new friends and new activities and your parents are not necessarily a part of that. Um, I know your mom, Justin, and she's awesome, but does she know all of your friends? Um, no, she doesn't. And, and yeah, um, and she shouldn't. Yeah. Hopefully she knows some of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's okay. And also, um, I think, uh, there can be a, a draw kind of, um, for parents of, uh, autistic people to kind of set up socialization for them. It's not the best to force it on them because these things kind of have to happen naturally say they uh, a parent planned like a get together or something um ju the fact that this was planned by their parents will kind of loom over the relationship and then maybe they might drift apart uh when otherwise they would have naturally come together mm -hmm. so um definitely you can help with advice. You can help with um, suggestions. You can help with stuff like that. But um, let let it happen naturally, and don't try to to force that. That's so true, and and it can really impact your relationship with the the social connections involved, but also the relationships within your family. So parents, number eight, we would encourage you to 
support your child's friendships and activities. We all want to have mutually supportive relationships and to engage in meaningful and enjoyable activities. Some neurodiverse teens and young adults want a lot of social activities. Others are quite content to keep company with themselves and one or two close friends. As parents, it's important that we not let our own experiences and expectations get in the way of what's best for our kids. They are unique individuals with their own lived experiences. Okay, we're getting close to the end of our list. We're up to tip number nine. And for this one, I would love to hear from both of you. Uh, tip number nine, be calm, patient, and flexible. Justin, how has that helped you when parents or teachers were following this tip? It definitely helps with learning um, to be calm, patient, and flexible because um, it's a lot easier uh, to learn something in a um, relaxed but focused state of mind um, and sometimes like, uh, if a teacher or a parent or whoever, um, gets really frustrated with, um, you maybe not understanding or taking a little bit, um, then it, it creates anxiety, which kind of, uh, can make it harder to improve. Um, so yeah, calm, patience, and flexible will help, um, a new neurodiverse student kind of learn and improve. Great. Moya, any advice to have parents help keep this tip in mind when life gets a little crazy in the neurodiverse lane? Always trying to remember that when I stay calm, it keeps whoever I'm in discussion or conflict or challenge with calm as well. So I just found like in general with parenting, but with all relationships, try and see where the other person's coming from. Be flexible. It's not no way. You have to do what I say. That won't work. Be calm, listen. And I had to do some of my own work around that, but the rewards as far as relationships in our family were incredible. A lot of great advice, a lot of great tips we've talked about here. Thank you both so much for joining me and for being part of my community and the Temple Grandin School community. Um, in our community and in our viewers' communities, we know there are many more neurodiverse students and parents. We'd love to share your tips too. Leave us a comment with your best lived advice and we'll send you a copy of Temple Grandin's book, thinking in pictures. Next up in the power of 10, 10 hobbies you should try. Although you wouldn't know it by our snowy April weather here in Colorado, summer is right around the corner. We'll share our favorite ways to kick back and relax, alone or with others. We hope you'll be inspired to try something new. We'll sign off with our last tip. It needs no explanation. Love your student. Thank you for joining us for The Power of 10. We'll see you next time.